Hey guys, it's General Heat here. How's everyone doing today? So, as you all know, Halo 3 is now finally on PC through the Master Chief Collection. It's been a long time in the making and it's finally happened. So like with the other previous games, we'll be taking a look at what still works and what doesn't work anymore. As well as what works worse and, you know, what works better. So, starting with what doesn't work anymore. Well, actually overall I do want to mention that Halo 3, this release, is actually really solid. And this list for Halo 3 is actually really short. So, let's uh, take a look right away. So during the Warthog run, when you're uh, driving down these tunnels here, these beams uh, from the ceiling will drop down, and they're supposed to be sliding across to, you know, obstruct your uh, path. And sometimes if you're not driving fast enough, you'll, they'll, you know, block you because they're sliding across. But now on MCC for Halo 3, they don't move anymore. They, they just drop down and just stay there. So for comparison, this is on the Xbox 360 version of Halo 3. When they drop down, you can see there's, they slowly slide across and pretty much get in your way. And pretty much all the beams will do this at all the uh, tunnel sections that you drive through. But now on the latest update for Halo 3, it seems to be not the case anymore. Now, this next one is the Secret Skull on Cortana. This is actually not new to the latest version of Halo 3. It's actually been uh, broken since launch. But I'm hoping it'll be fixed eventually because this is actually a pretty uh, important skull in my opinion. So on Mission Cortana near the uh, middle part in the in the uh, room here, there should be a skull that spawns up here. And unfortunately with MCC, the skull actually spawns in mid-air slightly, just a little bit. And But because of that, it falls down instead of like staying still. And when it falls down, it rolls off the edge and falls off into the abyss here. And that happens every single time and it will just fall and fall until it hits the bottom. So unfortunately the skull is unobtainable, but if you could obtain it and bring it to the next mission, it actually gives you a Spartan laser at the very start. But that's no longer possible on MCC and has pretty much never been, but hopefully it gets fixed soon. Now that's basically it for Halo 3, uh, but this new update for MCC, it, doesn't, it, it isn't just a Halo 3 update, it has a lot of other stuff for other games like Halo 2. And there is an issue with Halo 2 now. Uh, if you're on the Xbox One X version, playing at probably 4K, maybe even HDR, your HUD will be missing. Uh, most of your HUD. As you can see, my motion tracker is gone, my shield bar is gone, the grenade counter is gone, and most of my score counter is gone too. So that's, uh, that's a little issue there with the Xbox version, the Xbox One X version. And very specific people as well, those are playing at 4K. Now this next one I've also brought up in the past before, uh, since Halo 2 launched on MCC PC, but it still has not been fixed yet, so I do want to bring it up one more time. But plants on a lot of missions and classic graphics like Cairo Station and Metropolis. Sorry for the frame rate here, I don't know what's going on with my uh, PC at the time, but um, as you can see, the leaves on trees and plants, they're all missing on NVIDIA graphics. So that's uh, that hasn't been fixed yet. It's fine on AMD and it's fine on... Uh, the Xbox, but on NVIDIA graphics for classic mode, they're missing. Now moving on to what works worse. So first of all is Halo 3 terminals. Now again, technically this has been around since launch, but it still hasn't been fixed yet. And I, of course I do want to bring it up in hopes that one day it'll get fixed. So Halo 3 terminals, overall they actually do work fine. You know, functionally, you know, everything is great about them, but if you notice on the left side of the screen, like the bottom left corner-ish of the uh, of the display, there's a big blank space there. Now, for those of you who haven't played the OG Halo 3 for a while, you may not remember what used to be there. But if we go back on the 360 version, and we look in the bottom left corner where that blank space is, once the uh, text shows up, you can see there's supposed to be images there. But those images are missing from every terminal on MCC. So again, hopefully that does get fixed in the future. Now this next one is related to forge controls. This one is more of an opinion, but um, so Halo 3's forge has been changed and improved a lot, which we'll cover a little bit later in the video. But as you can see now, in Halo 3, the object pretty much moves you. It's got like one of those in Soviet Russia jokes, but now object does move you. And um, because of that, if you're not careful, it can actually push you through the walls and you can get blown up a lot. And I've seen a lot of people complain about that because on OG Halo 3, or even like the older version of Halo 3 and MCC, uh, you move the object. As you move around, then the object moves. But on the new version of MCC with the new Forge update, uh, object moves you. And because of that, it can get you killed a lot. So it's kind of an inconvenience, but 
that new forge control it is very powerful for other people too it, it does have a lot of benefits but also some minor inconveniences so next up is theater mode on the pc version of theater mode the record button is missing in addition to the screenshot button being uh, disabled it's not a big deal but the record button on the uh, xbox one version it, uh, when you click it it basically uh, records a short it, it basically records uh, the gameplay that you're doing and then you're able to play it back in theater mode, an exact playback of every movement you did with the camera in theater mode. And then uh, you can actually save that clip to game DVR as well, or just you know watch what you did, or discard it. But now that's missing on PC, you can't do that anymore. But it's a little minor thing that's missing. It's not really a huge deal, because you could just you know record with game DVR anyways, manually. But anyways, next up is the Halo 2 Leon customization menu. Still not fixed. Still, um... The helmet it has that weird texture on it. It, it. it just, you know, still not fixed yet. So hopefully that gets fixed soon. Uh, next up is the Halo 2 Anniversary Forge menu. Yes, it is now available officially, uh, Halo 2 Anniversary Forge. But again, I'll cover that later in the video. But I do want to point out an issue with Forge in that on a PC, if you're using the mouse to navigate the, um, the Forge menu, Every time you click a category, it closes the menu. It does actually navigate to the next menu, but it closes it, minimizes it each time. So you gotta keep bringing it up every single time. So that's definitely an inconvenience and a bug there that uh, hopefully gets fixed in the future as well. So next up is the uh, customization menu. Again, I'll cover more of this in a bit, but to exit the customization of each game, you have to press the back button twice. So minor bug there, just press it twice. So if you're getting confused about like why you couldn't exit the menu, you just have to press the button twice. All right, so that's really the only issues with this update. Uh, the, the only major issues. There's really nothing else that's outright like broken. But now we're gonna tackle what works better. And there's a lot of stuff that's been improved in this update. So for Halo 3, your emblem now finally works in game. In the past, it just gave you like a randomized default emblem. It was like a smiley face or something in a lot of cases. But now, it actually displays your actual emblem that you have set in a customization in your player ID. And that works for both Elites and Spartans. This has been like a huge request um, that another community has been making since like pretty much the launch of MCC. Now you can actually have your own emblem in-game. And speaking of customization, armor customization is another huge improvement for Halo 3, just like all the other previous games. So with Halo 3, you get full you know, individual piece by piece armor customization. And you can do it for like all the shoulders and it works with elites as well. And uh, armor color is improved a lot too. You can now finally edit your um, your third color for the little stripe on your armor. So big improvement there. Now next, uh, as I mentioned in some previous videos about like new upcoming features, uh, the challenges, the challenge hub is now, you know, fully available and fully accessible. and. Now there's a lot of uh, weekly PvP and PvE, seasonal, and even the Halo 3 celebration challenges. And you complete challenges to get season points or XP that you can eventually use to unlock new stuff like skulls, nameplates, uh, weapon skins, uh, vehicle skins as well. Which brings us to our next topic, which is now you can unlock a lot of new weapon and vehicle skins, especially for Halo 1, Halo 1 Classic Multiplayer. So as you can see, this is Season 2 content that you can use season points to unlock. And there's a lot of like visor uh, colors, vehicle skins, weapon skins, and new nameplates to unlock. And a lot of these are really cool too. So you apply them in the uh, Halo 1 customization menu and you can see like there's gold skins for weapons. Uh, there's a lot of creative skins too. There's so many options. And uh, just skins for vehicles as well. A lot of cool ones. I really like the Jurassic Park Warthog because I'm a huge Jurassic Park fan. It's like one of my uh, childhood movies, basically. But yeah, so in game, whatever uh, skins, uh, whatever like vehicle or weapon the last player held, it will be the skin that player has. And once you pick it up, it changes to whatever skin you have, and other players see that same thing too. But overall, skins look really cool in game, and I'm actually pretty impressed by them. And actually, I'm pretty excited to get uh, more skins for CE, uh, more than I expected. But anyways, next up. The background painting on certain cutscene missions in Halo 3, like Cortana, for example, uh, it's been improved a lot. Like, this is on MCC, and now we're on uh, the original Halo 3, even on the older MCC Halo 3. You can see the quality is not as good anymore in the old versions. So here's a comparison. This is uh, the OG Halo 3 all the way through, like, MCC up until, like, the recent update. And 
As you can see, that's what it looks like. Take it all in. And then now, it's been improved a lot. The quality is a lot better. There's a lot more details in the background, in the artwork. It's overall just like a lot better. So yeah, and it, this next one's pretty self-explanatory, but weapon sounds have been fixed. I'll let you guys listen to it. Okay, so hopefully you heard the difference there in the weapon sounds. Um, I personally actually can't tell a huge difference, but everybody says the sounds are much better now. So I believe them. But next up, well, as I mentioned before a few times in the video, and as you probably noticed by now, Forge, Forge, Forge. Everywhere Forge has been improved. It's now available for all of the games, not just Halo 3, but the Forge modes for the previous games like Halo Reach and Halo 2 Anniversary, they are now officially launched on PC. And of course, they've also been improved for Xbox as well. So, for example, you know, Halo 3, you got the Elephant and AA Wraith and Forge now on both consoles, not just PC. I know a lot of people are worried that it'd be PC only, but no, it's the exact same on both platforms, PC and Xbox. And likewise, here we are on the Xbox version of Halo Reach and all the new features for Forge. I know a lot of people were, were spreading like uh, rumors or something or concerned that the new stuff would only be for PC. Nope, it's on Xbox now. And of course, Halo 2 Anniversary Forge is now available on PC as well. Uh, I don't think there's been any like really big new updates that I could tell. I think there's like a couple new features here and there. But aside from that, it's um, mostly the same. Aside from that main menu bug, that Forge menu bug that I mentioned earlier. Next up is another Halo 2 improvement. This has been one that people have been talking about for years. And that is, Elites can now finally dual wield again in campaign. That used to be like totally broken since like day one of MCC launch. Uh, all the elites that were supposed to dual wield, they wouldn't dual wield anymore. But now they can dual wield just fine. And, like I remember back in the day, I, I did a couple of videos covering this, but like even like bosses, like the heretic leader, he wouldn't dual wield anymore. And now he can. But back then without dual wielding, it, it, it actually kind of made the game a little easier because they, they had like half the firepower essentially. But now it's pretty much back to as it should be. Perfectly balanced as all things should be. Um, but anyways, this next one's a small fix, but if you remember in uh, my video when Halo 2 first launched on MCC PC, there was a bug where with the energy sword and anniversary graphics, if you look at this flood tank here, the sword would go invisible. But that's been fixed now and, you know, it's all good. But I remember it used to affect like everything, including the Xbox version. Uh, this next one is a small improvement to the bandana skull. The bandana skull, when used in campaign now, your ammo counter for both your weapons and your grenades now actually show the infinity symbol. Back in the day, well, just a few days ago really, before this update released, they would actually just show like the regular ammo count. Like it would show 100 for the, um, like for example, the energy sword battery charge, or it would show like the full ammo for projectile weapons. And the grenades would show like four for each or two for each, I, I forgot which one it was. But now it shows the infinity symbol, which makes sense. So, this next one, this has also been a weird one that's been broken since the beginning of MCC launch, but the Prophet of Regret used to be not solid, actually. Um, and like, you used to not be able to lock onto him with like the rocket launcher, and really like any weapon that you point at him, your reticle would not turn red when you looked at the uh, Prophet of Regret back in the day. <laughs> well, actually really up until this update. But now, that's been totally fixed. His collision is essentially all good now. You, you don't phase through him anymore, now he's like totally solid. Back in the day, you could just like walk through him when he's floating, and your weapon's fire would largely go through him too. But now, that's all back to normal. In fact, his collision has been so fixed that um, now, you can actually kill him without even boarding him. <laughs> like here, I just, like, I just swung the sword at him a couple times, and he died. <laughs> so, I, I guess that's like a new bug, because you're not supposed to be able to kill the Prophet of Regret without um, punching him while on his throne. So, that's uh, he, he was fixed too much, essentially. Uh, but this next one is another cool thing added to Halo 2 Classic uh, Custom Games. And that is the Fuel Rod Gun is now available as a weapon in-game. It used to not be available, like it used to be like in the game files, but it was like hidden away and you know not normally accessible to the player. But now it's a, it's a custom game option and now people can actually use the Fuel Rod Gun correctly in custom games. So that's a pretty cool new addition to the weapon palette of Halo 2. Now this next one is obviously a big one, but 
a big improvement is the Halo 3 Acrophobia skull. Which I still stand by what I said in previous videos and that it's the greatest skull ever made in Halo history. The Acrophobia skull, when activated, basically is like, um, I said it every time, but it's like creative mode in Minecraft where uh, it lets you fly around on demand. And with that, you can pretty much beat the Warthog run or other missions without ever setting foot in a vehicle or pretty much without ever needing to touch the ground for the most part. But, and, and yes, a lot of people have been asking me over and over again, this is also on the Xbox version, if you haven't noticed by now. It's not just exclusive to the PC version. Again, some people are concerned about that, but it is on the Xbox version as well. So, finally, to wrap this video up with what still works. Well, pretty much everything, all the core features of Halo 3, uh, even like old glitches, everything still works the same. Everything still works great in Halo 3. Overall, you know, like custom games, Forge, theater mode, there's really nothing broken about this game. This has been a very solid release overall. Like I said, like with uh, what doesn't work, I, I could barely find anything that doesn't work outright. There's like a few old issues like the Cortana skull that still linger around and a few minor issues like terminals that were also there from the beginning. But overall, this update didn't really break anything. The only thing was really just the uh, the beams that dropped down during the Warthog run. But again, that's pretty minor. and. You know, in previous releases, there were quite a few things that didn't work at launch. But now with Halo 3, they, they it's pretty uh, great job on 343's part. They got everything pretty much working and pretty pretty much solid. I haven't really encountered any major issues of the game. So I do want to uh, applaud 343 for a uh, great port with Halo 3. But yeah, so I hope you guys did enjoy this video and found it to be interesting. Uh, if you did, then as always, make sure to leave a like. Uh, leave a thoughts in the comments. If you have to check out or look into, just let me know. Other than that, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you all next time. Bye, guys.